Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, I'm sharing with you my PM nighttime skincare routine. It seems like so, so long since I've done an updated evening routine for you guys. I wanna put that right today. But more than just share with you my current skincare routine, I also wanna use this as a way of demonstrating how you can form a skincare routine around a high strength or prescription strength retinoid. I've recently restarted different Adapalin, which is a fantastic prescription strength retinoid for my adult acne and also to get some amazing anti-aging benefits. And I know a lot of people are a little bit intimidated about piecing products alongside high strength retinoids. But I'm here to tell you, you shouldn't be. And this is some great ways that you can do that. So sit back, relax, and let's talk my evening skincare routine. Now, before we jump into this, I guess I should probably tell you about my skin itself so you can kind of know how this routine will pair with your own skin type. I am super oily, greasy, acne prone, all of that. Even at 35, I still get way more pimples than I think I should do at this age, but I'm okay with that. I've kind of come to terms with the fact I have adult acne and I'm really proud of the routine that I've curated in order to tackle that. I recently filmed my morning skincare routine around anti-aging and acne fighting and I'm gonna leave a link to that up there if you do wanna check it out because kind of see this is like a two-part series. This is the PM follow-up to that. And there's some really, really great steps that I want to share with you and some fantastic products that have helped me along the way. Whilst I'm in my mid-30s and we're talking about anti-aging, I think this routine could honestly apply to any age group. Anti-aging doesn't start at a specific age. It's something you should be evolving throughout your skincare journey. And I've definitely tweaked up and dialed up the intensity of some of the actives in my routine to just keep those fine lines, wrinkles, and hyperpigmentation at bay. So let's cut the waffle and delve straight on in with cleansers. Now, it is super warm here in the UK. Even though it's like 8 p.m., as you can see, the sun is still shining through and it's very, very warm. So I've been going in heavy on the SPF and I've been using this, which is the Skinny's Conquer SPF 50. I love this. It's a rich balm, just gets you covered, protects the skin. I actually find I get such a great level of protection with this that even when the sun's really intense, I don't get a whole lot of tan going on. I've got a little bit of color to the skin now, courtesy of Isle of Paradise medium tanning drops. So, you know, whilst I'm no expert in self tanners, that's the one that I've been using at the moment. And honestly, I think it's really, really good. So I will link that as I will all of the products I mentioned today below if you do want to check them out in more detail. Because this is such a good sunscreen, it takes an awful lot of shifting. And so in the shower just now, I went in first with this, which is the Beauty of Yosen Radiance Cleansing Balm. Love this. This this is life. This and the Juno Clo Coat Clean 10, when I get my words out, are my two favorite cleansers. They just melt everything off. No matter whether you've got waterproof makeup on, multiple levels of really hard to shift SPF, this gone in one. And I really love it. I'm quite lavish with this. I like to do a lot of facial massage. So I really massage it in. Then you add water, it turns milky, and then it emulsifies and disappears down the sink. I'd say it leaves a very, very slight film on the skin, which if you've got dry skin, not a problem at all. Extra hydration. But for me, that is a grease slick. Like literally, I've been out of the shower like 10 minutes and I already feel greasy. You're going to want to follow with a gel cleanser just to wash off every last trace and just mattify the skin a little bit. I, of course, and you guys know what's coming. You're probably all going, oh, this again. But honestly, I'm fangirling so much about this. This is the Jelly Joker Cleanser by Geek and Gorgeous. Don't need to say much more about this because you guys have seen it on the channel before. But I just find this works to kind of remove the last traces of everything on the skin. It leaves my skin feeling really matte, but not super stripped and dried and just kind of prepped for the rest of the routine. I did all of that off camera because let's be honest, I am a total, total klutz. And the idea of being able to use water, products, filming equipment, it would be a hot mess and not in the good way. So all of that was done off camera and now I'm ready to start with my actual routine. I've been out of the shower, like I said, for about 10 minutes and already I feel just a little bit sticky. It is super hot and humid here in the UK. So I am gonna go in with an extra step than what I would normally do. I normally just go straight into the routine, but I'm gonna use this. This is the Isn't Treat Green Tea Fresh Toner. And I use this on a cotton round just to kind of you know refresh the skin and get off any built up sweat or anything that I might have going on. I am using here, I'm using a disposable cotton round. Don't read me to filth. I use these when I'm filming because it's just that little bit easier. Um, I do usually, when I reach for cotton rounds, use um, reusable ones, the ones that you wash. And I'll leave a link to some of my favorites below. But for the ease of filming, I'm just going in with this. 
sort of tackling the areas where I get most oily because this is really nice and mattifying. And as you can see, I've got a great big zit friend here. So I'll just go over that to kind of just mattify everything down. And now we can move on to the rest of the routine. First off, before I go into any of my serums, I apply a little slick of this, which is the Q&A Caffeine Serum, which you'll have seen in my morning skincare routine. There's not a whole lot of benefit from using caffeine in the evening because it's got like a 12 hour mechanism of action. So actually you're best using it to get rid of those dark circles and puffiness in the morning. But I use it morning and evening for a couple of reasons. First of all, this super inexpensive, so you don't feel like you're paying out and wasting product. And second of all, I kind of think, what happens if I have to be rescued in the night? I want to look snatched and at my best. So I think it's never a bad way of just adding a little bit more glamour to the routine and getting rid of some of those dark circles. So I just run these under the eye. If you reach for something with like a nice cinnamide alongside the caffeine, actually that does have a longer term benefit. So it's worth applying morning and evening. Just a strict caffeine serum. I probably stick to the morning unless you're like me and want to be a little bit bougie and a little bit extra. Now, first step in my routine on an evening is always my peptides. I like my peptides to be closest to the skin because that's where I feel are doing the most benefit. There's so many different peptides out there and I kind of summarized some of my favorites in a recent video, which I'll link up there if you want to explore them in more detail. My current ride or die favorite is this. This is the reformulated copper amino isolate serum 3 1.1. That's a mouthful by Neod, which honestly, they've taken a really good product and in my opinion, dialed it up and just made it an outstanding product. I really love this. And look at the color. I'm wearing the same color on my top. So my pajamas match my skincare products. And that's how you know you're a skincare bougie aficionado. So I put like four or five drops of this. It's a bit on the pricey side. So I'm not as lavish with this as I will be some other products. And I just melt this into the skin. I find this takes literally no time at all to blend. And the reason I put it first is I like to keep my peptides at the opposite end of the routine to my high strength retinoids. People often say, can you use peptides and retinoids together in the same routine? Yes, you can. It's a myth. There seems to be a perpetual myth out there that you can't. You absolutely can. But I always say, just to be on the safe side, keep them at the opposite ends of your routine and use different buffering serums in between. This so, so good on the skin. It doesn't feel tacky. It doesn't feel anything really. It just adds a light level of hydration, but those copper peptides are going to be boosting my collagen all night long. There's some cheaper alternatives to this one. If you don't want to reach for this, which I think is a bit up there in price, if I'm totally honest, you could use the Hyaluride Sub Q Skin, which I love. You could use the Buffet, uh, the Ordinary Buffet with Copper Peptides, which is also a really, really great option. And Medicate to a really nice crystal peptides formulation that, oh, is to die for. So there's other ones out there and I'll link some options below, but check out that peptide video if you kind of want to know a little bit more. Now, while that's sunk in, it's done all its work. I have got a couple of other serums that I like to add before I then go into my retinoids. I'm suffering with hyperpigmentation and dark spots. It's just none of my acne ever fades completely. It needs that little bit of hand, a little bit of work. And so a lot of the serums I use are targeted towards that. One of the first signs of aging in our skin are those dark spots and that hyperpigmentation. So this is a key element of tackling the aged look in the skin. And I think by elevating, lifting the complexion, evening it out and tackling some hyperpigmentation, you can get a more youthful look and kind of cheat the age a little bit, which I'm all about. I'm now going to put a couple of drops of my serum on. I created my own skincare line because I kind of found it impossible to actually combine multi-actives in the right formulation that kind of did everything I wanted. So I created my Got You Covered Super Serum, which gets all the stuff you need to tackle hyperpigmentation. And it's kind of all the ingredients you could be missing out on in your skincare routine. I don't want this to be a shameful plug for my skincare line because I am not all about that on this channel. I love so many brands and want to showcase them. So if you didn't want to reach for my serum, you could just buy the individual ingredients that I'm going to mention now and layer them on top of one another. That would work absolutely fine. I created this just for the ease of use to have it all in one potion and that way you can get all the benefits without multiple steps. But you can absolutely break it down. And if you want to know more information about this serum, I'll leave a link up there. It's www.madaboutskincare.com. There's going to be a restock done early next week. Um, and if you've pre-ordered, all the codes and everything are going to go out this Friday. So definitely check that out. But I like to put a couple of drops of this onto my skin. I find this to be really easy to spread. So I do like three drops. And what this does is combine every active you need for tackling your hyperpigmentation, your aging, and just giving the skin a really, really nice nourishing boost. So you've got some hydrators such as glycerin in here, but more importantly, you've got peptides. So it really boosts up, does up the intensity of the peptides you've already applied using that Neod product. You've got azelaic acid in a 5% concentration, 
which I love because it's low strength, great for frequent use. You can use it morning and evening. And azelaic acid will even out the skin tone. It'll help with any hyperpigmentation. It dials back any redness and irritation and can actually prevent breakouts by minimizing the amount of acne causing bacteria. It's like my wonder ingredient. You've also got a vitamin C derivative in here, which is a fantastic gentle form of vitamin C, which again will help to brighten the skin and boost that collagen production. And then finally, you've got things like panthenol, aloe, all of the things that can just really help to calm, soothe, and bring some harmony. You've also got Q10 in here, which is a great antioxidant to protect the skin and just really dial up the protective barrier of the skin as we sleep. Just everything you could want. But like I say, you could reach for a separate derivative, vitamin C derivative, azelaic acid, Q10, and all that if you do want to shop elsewhere and just piece it together one product after the next. Now, this sinks in without a trace, which I love, but it still leaves behind a little bit of hydration, which is great, particularly if you have dry or combination dry skin. This could work really, really well for you as well. Let that do all its work. And then we're coming on to another couple of serums I want to mention. I'm an experienced azelaic acid user. I've probably been using it for the past like three or four years and it is honestly my favorite ingredient in skincare. I said the serum that I just applied had a 5% concentration of azelaic acid which is great. Fantastic for beginners. It's great for people that want to use a low concentration over a longer period of time. If like me it's your absolute favorite favorite ingredient and you want to get maximum bang for your buck then you can add another azelaic on top of this. My serum is formulated in a way that you can layer other products to dial up the intensity of any specific ingredient you want making it super flexible. So I go in with a couple of drops of this which is the a pad azelaic acid by geek and gorgeous this just takes it from a five percent up in concentration a little bit, which I think my skin benefits from, but I think, you know, it's up to you whether you want to dial that up or not. I find like three drops of this is more than enough. And I just add it again, straight on top of that. And it's beautiful. You don't get too much tingling. You don't get too much irritation or anything from this azelaic acid because it's a derivative. So it's super, super gentle. And like one of my skincare best friends, I know so many of you guys have been raving about it too. So I don't think I'm on my own with this, but sound off in the comment section, your thoughts and feelings on any of the products mentioned. Then finally, I've got a couple of things that I do just add as like the final, final steps. As a little bit of a bougie buffer before I get onto my um, retinoid, you'll notice that I've used peptides in the Neo Product. There's then peptides in my serum. I've then used an azelaic acid just to make sure that the skin is all in harmony and that you've got some buffering, a product protecting those peptides that you've put on from the retinoid that I'm going to apply in a minute. I like to go on with a balancing serum or toner. This one is my favorite. This is the Make Prem Extra Moisture Essence. This has panthenol to calm and soothe and it just balances back the skin's pH and just makes everything harmonious. I don't use a super high amount of this. I think one, two drops more than enough. It's really just to buffer out and calm everything down. It feels so good on the skin and is great if you have dry skin because it gives that extra moisture. If you want something even more lightweight, you could go for the Stressless Serum by Geek and Gorgeous, which is an absolutely stunning oat-based um, buffering and soothing, calming serum. You could always go for that, but for me, I think this panthenol-infused um, essence by Make Prem is honestly my absolute holy grail. Now, let's come on to what you're all here for, the actual high-strength retinoid itself, which is this. This is Different Gel, which is a dapoline. It's a second generation of retinoid, which means you don't get as as much sensitivity, redness, and peeling as you would with tretinoin, but it's specifically formulated to be great with people with acne. It speeds up cellular turnover, it decongests the skin, it can help minimize the instance of acne causing bacteria on the skin, and it's just an acne sufferer's best friend. Beyond all of that, it works in a similar way to traditional retinoids in that it will help to boost collagen production and anti-age the skin, which I'm all about. If you don't want this, if you don't have adult acne, for example, you could switch this for tretinoin, which will get all the great benefits, but might be less drying on the skin, you kind of have to measure the two as to what you want to get out of them, but different honestly, my best friend. I got this online. You can get it through an online prescription service here in the UK, which I'll link below if you do want to check it out. It's actually over the counter in the US, so even, even more convenient. Now, as you'll see, I've kept it really far away from my peptides, which I used at the start of the skincare routine. I haven't done any exfoliation in this routine either, because I don't think using exfoliators alongside a high strength retinoid is a good idea. It can cause sensitivity and irritation in the skin, so I like to keep the two separate. A lot of people refer to something called the sandwich technique, where we talk 
talk about retinoids, which is where you use a hydrating product, your retinoid, and a hydrating product. So that's sandwiching it between the two to minimize any dryness. I did that with using the Panthenol Serum by Make Prem, and I'm going to follow with a moisturize after. So you'll see that in action. When it comes to Differin, a pea sized amount is genuinely what you need. Now, what is a pea sized amount? Who has peas in the bathroom that they can measure this by? It's ridiculous. So I like to take it on my little fingernail and just put enough to cover your little fingernail like that. That's kind of a pea sized amount. Um, it's not like it's not rocket science and it's not a hard and fast rule but that's what I find works best for me and I just smooth it across the face I avoid my neck which is super sensitive and obviously I avoid the eyelids as well which are prone to dryness and sensitivity you can take it reasonably far up under the eye don't take it to the lash line because obviously when products warm on the skin they migrate upwards anyway so you don't need to take it right to the lash line but under the contour of the eyes absolutely fine I also just as a side note avoid my ears because I used to always catch my ears with it and then I'd forget to put other products on there and I'd be walking around with the driest flakiest ear you've ever seen no one wants that in their life so I tend to avoid that area as well and just put it into the skin being gentle rather than rough and just Oh, feels so, so good. Like I say, I'm now going to sandwich it before it dries fully because it's been absorbed into the skin. I like to sandwich it with another moisturizer. For me, it's this, which is the V Green Daily Moisture Cream. But to be honest, this is just for people that have super oily, acne prone skin. If you want a more intense moisturizer, reach for like a facial oil or something with an oil base. It's just going to dial up the intensity. This is gel based and oil free. So really best for people like me who are super oily. I only put a small amount on so I don't overload the skin, but finish that off. And it feels so, so good. The last step before I go to bed, put my sleep mask on and live my fantasy in bed. I do put on a little bit of an acne treatment because you can see this zit here is nobody's friend. I've been reaching for this. This is a Scientia. Scientia? I think it is Pure Clarity Balm. This is a UK brand, which I'm really loving at the moment. And this, so, so cute. Like, look, I match my top to this. It's like a lavender hue product. And it's basically, it has salicylic acid in. It's got willow bark in here. It's got zinc, which is going to help mattify. And it's got some clays in there to draw out any impurities and all the nastiness and the gunge that's in the zit. I find this to be super, super effective. And because it's got glycerin in, it also doesn't dry the area. So I just put it on there. It doesn't sink in. Just, you know, this is not a morning treatment. This is something I'll put in the area like that. Leave on overnight. No one's seen you. I know I look ridiculous, but no one's watching me overnight. So you know what? It's all good. <laughs> so there you have it, guys. My evening skincare routine from start to finish and how you can pair peptides, retinoids, all the anti-aging goodness in one routine without worrying that you're compromising any of them. I would love, love, love to know what your favorite anti-aging products are. So sound off in the comments section below. Wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well, and love your skin. Take care. Bye.